Hi, hi, hi. God bless you guys. Uh, just want to jump on here quickly and just share a brief word that's been on my heart and uh, just trust that it will bless you and will encourage you in Jesus' name. So we're going to be talking about building intimacy, how to build intimacy with the Lord, how to build intimacy with the Lord. Hi, Tochi, God bless you. Let us know where you're watching from. God bless you, Neil. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you want to please share this video with your friends, share it on your wall, it'll be great. Hi, Flaviana, how you doing? Hi, Jamie, God bless you. Let us know where you're watching from, it'll be good. Um, so God bless you guys, thanks for joining us. So I'm just gonna share a quick word on how to build intimacy with the Lord. Uh, a friend of mine visited me today and um, it was one of the questions he asked me and this is, one, this is one question I get asked by so many different people in different ways and um, you know everyone is trying to find a secret formula how do what's the secret formula for uh, building an awesome relationship with the Lord and really there's no formula to be honest with you but there are certain things that you can do actually I remember when I watched this movie, The Finger of God, one of the things, one of the things I learned, I took away from the movie, when I watched The Finger of God, if you've never watched The Finger of God, please go and watch it, it's an awesome movie. And it just documents the Toronto Revival, um, Randy Clark, Bill Johnson, Jesus Culture, um, Heidi Baker, I know a lot of those awesome people were in that video. But one of the things I picked from that video was that these guys knew the Holy Spirit in a way that I didn't know him. That's one of my takeaway lessons from that video. When I watched it, I was like, man, I watched it like about maybe six years ago, seven years ago, and I just realized that these guys in, in the Finger of God movie, they had a relationship with the Holy Spirit on a level that I didn't. And that search, that, that, that drove me to say, look, I need to know the Holy Spirit as much as these guys do. And I began to search and hunger. The Bible says, they that thirst and hunger for the Lord, uh, they that thirst and hunger um, shall be satisfied. So the Bible says, if you draw near to the Lord, He will draw near to you. So it set me on a journey to learn more about the Holy Spirit, to learn how to hunger and thirst and desire Him and want Him and have fellowship and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So I want to just share a brief, just kind of, some nuggets, not going to cover everything about intimacy, but I'm just going to share just a little bit about intimacy. So one of the things, if you want to learn how to grow for yourself, you know, I like, you know, going to church and having church meetings and fellowship and everything. But the reality is this church is like having, how do I put it? If you've ever been to school or university or something, all the lecturer does is just give you highlights. They give you bullet points. And that those bullet points are supposed to drive you to go and study more, to go and research more and do some work yourself. So I see. I feel the same way with church. Church is like a snippet. Church is like gives you a taster of what you should be having on a day-to-day -day basis. But some people, most of the time, they kind of go to church, have a fellowship in church, pray, you know, sing these worship songs, read the Bible in church, and that's it. They don't open their Bible during the week. They don't have fellowship with the Lord during the week. You know, then they come back again next Sunday and do it again. And, you know, it's kind of like they're one snack in the whole week. It's almost like you're having one meal on Sunday, Sunday morning, and don't eat any meal again until the next Sunday morning. That's exactly what it is in, in the spiritual, or in the, sorry, the natural, is if you can relate to that. But you realize that you can't do that, for, except you're fasting, obviously. But you, know, you can't sustain yourself normally by having one snack on a Sunday morning, and that's it till the next Sunday morning. You don't have any fellowship. You don't have any food um, in your body or nourishment. So it's the same way with us. We need nourishment. We need to, we need to be refueled, right? We need to be re-energized. What did Jesus say? Jesus said in, in, I think, in John 4. So it says, man shall not live, Matthew 4. Man shall not live, Matthew 4, 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So that's how we live. We live by the word. Our, our life is sustained by the word. So we need spiritual renewal. We need fellowship. You know, the Bible, I think it was uh, Peter when he preached the sermon, uh, the first sermon he preached, he said, he said something. He said that we may have times of refreshing may come from his presence. 
time, I want to read that scripture if I can find it. Um, he was talking, uh, when this was after he had obviously the guys had been saved and you know, the day of Pentecost had come. And he says, here you go. I'm trying to find the scripture. Um, Repent, repent therefore and be baptized. Da, da, da. Anyway, I can't find the scripture right now. But anyway, but one of the things he said was that we may have times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. That's how we get refreshed. You know, most of the time when we go out on our day, you know, you get, uh, you get, obviously life happens to every one of us, right? So, life happens to every one of us. But how do we get refreshed? Acts chapter 3 verse 20 is the scripture I'm looking for. Acts 3.20. It says, verse 17 says, And now, brothers, I, want to, I, want, I know that you acted in ignorance as did your rulers, but that God foretold by the mouth of, our, of the prophets that his Christ would suffer and he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus. Times of refreshing, that's how we, we get refreshed. We get refreshed, we get revived, we get renewed by the presence. It's the presence of the Lord. It's the presence of the Lord. We need to practice the presence of the Lord. You need to realize this. That the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God is always with you every single day, every single moment, every single time. But how is he with you? God the Father at the moment is sitting in heaven, right? Jesus, the resurrected Jesus is not on the earth. The resurrected Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. But the Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus. Jesus said, I think it was John 16 there about, he said he would send another comforter. He sent another one, the paraclete, the, another one just like himself. He sent the Holy Spirit to come and live and abide in us. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is the one that is with us every single moment of the day. So he's right there with you. He's right there when you're sleeping. He's right there when you're awake. He's right there when you're working. He's right there when you're driving your car. He's right there with you every single moment of the day. So how can I build intimacy with the Lord? How can I develop friendship or intimacy and get to know him more? I do this by get building intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit revealed to you every single thing I've spoken to you. The Holy Spirit revealed to you the Father and the Son. If you want to know Jesus, get to know the Holy Spirit. If you want to know the Father, get to know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just like Jesus. He will reveal to you everything that the Father has spoken or the Father has revealed to Jesus. Hallelujah. So if we want to grow in our fellowship and our relationship with the Lord, we need to grow in our fellowship and relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the junior brother of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the same as Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the same as God. The Holy Spirit is God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is God. You need to know the Holy Spirit if you want to grow in intimacy with the Lord. Hallelujah. So how can I build intimacy with the Lord? I want to share a few scriptures. I talk about how we build intimacy. Most of the time, our prayer life, and when I say this, first thing you think about is prayer, which is great. Prayer is right. It's actually one of the key things. But what kind of prayer? There are different kinds of prayer, just in case we didn't realize this. There's not just one kind of prayer. There are different kinds of prayer. So what kind of prayer are you talking about? I'm not going to find out. I'm not going to read through scripture for it. But the Bible says praying with all manner of prayer and all supplications in the Holy Spirit. That's Ephesians chapter 6. Paul saying that we may pray with all manner of prayers and supplication in the Spirit. So he's talking about there are different kinds of prayer and supplication. Let me talk about different kinds of prayer. 
There's a prayer of faith. Just command, just command. Speak a word of faith, boom, and it happens. There's a prayer of intercession where you're interceding on behalf of somebody else. There's a prayer of petition when you're petitioning the Lord on something or to do something. Amen. So there are different kinds of prayer. But then, the one prayer I want to talk about that most people don't know about is actually the prayer the contemplative kind of prayer, the prayer of contemplation. There are different words for it, different kind of names for it. Some people call it silent prayer. Some people call it listening prayer. Some people call it contemplative prayer. Some people call it soaking prayer. Now this is the kind of prayer I'm gonna talk about when I'm talking about building intimacy with the Lord. I'm referring on how can you build intimacy. This is something I learned, how to learn this from looking at the lives of people who have gone ahead of us and how were they, I actually asked some of these guys this question. I remember one time I was sitting with Randy Clark. Uh, we, I think that was on a mission trip with him a few years ago. He was on the table and I was asking him, we were having breakfast and I asked him, I said, Dr. Randy, you're such a busy man. You're such a busy guy. How do you have time? How do you actually have time to fellowship with the Lord? It's such a busy schedule. How do you have time to build intimacy with the Lord? And he said to me, listen, I do that a lot by just spending time with him in intimacy, in just waiting upon the Lord, in silence, in silence. Hallelujah. There's so many scriptures that talk about silent prayer or talking about being still in the, in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Be still and know that I am God. That's a prayer. That's, uh, that's taken from Psalm 46. Psalm 46. So I'm going to read a few scriptures that talk about us being still, being quiet, and just being silent in His presence. I'm going to read a few scriptures that say this. So this, this, this one I'm sharing is for those who want to grow in intimacy with the Lord. If you want to grow in deeper intimacy and deeper work with the Lord, you need to learn the secret of contemplative prayer or silent prayer or waiting on the Lord, or soaking prayer, whatever you want to call it. So Psalm 46, verse 10. It says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Actually, another way to read this is actually, if you read that thing from the King James, it says, Be still, and there's a, there's a thing, there's a, a italic or so, Be still and know God. You can read it this way, be still and know God. Or you can actually say, for me to know God, I need to be still. Can you catch that? For me to know God, I need to be still. I need to be quiet. I need to be silent. Hallelujah. So, when we, most of the time when we come to prayer, we actually are the ones talking and talking. And we're talking at God. We're just talking and making all our demands and, you know, saying all the stuff we want to say, which is great. But we never wait and be quiet long enough to receive the answers to our prayer or to receive instruction or to receive wisdom or to receive the knowledge of the Lord or to receive his guidance. So when you pray, normally when you do, what you should do is, yes, when you pray, make your petitions. The Bible says when you pray, make your wants or your needs or desires made known unto the Lord. Great. But the Bible then says, the peace of God. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. That peace, that quietness, that rest is the place you should be at. Because that's the Bible says this is the rest in which will cause the weary to rest. You need to learn to rest and be still in his presence. The Bible says be still and know that I am God. Another scripture I'm going to give you is Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. Let me read that quickly. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. Isaiah 30, 15 says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, listen, it says, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. Did you get that? It says, For thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust 
shall be your strength. In quietness and stillness shall be your strength. This is how we receive strength. What does the Bible say in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31? Let me read this. It's a popular scripture, but most people don't think about it in these terms. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How do you wait upon the Lord? How do you wait upon the Lord? They that wait, it's like when a waiter is coming to take your, your order in the restaurant, right? They're standing by your side and they don't talk. They just more like maybe hand you the, the they hand you the menu and they, they have their notepad and their pen and they want to take notes and they're waiting on you. So they're quiet, they're listening, they're waiting for you to make, your, make up your mind what you want. But they are still, they are quiet and waiting on you. It's the same way when we wait upon the Lord, we are usually, or we should be, quiet and silent in His presence. Hallelujah. You should be quiet and silent in His presence and wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we need to learn how to be quiet and just be, be still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. So, there's another scripture I want to read to us. It's from Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 20. Habakkuk 2, verse 20. Let's read that quickly. Habakkuk 2, 20 says, It says, But the Lord, it says, But the Lord is in his holy temple, right? Let all the earth be silent before him. Did you catch that? Habakkuk 2.20 says, The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. So when you come into the presence of the Lord, you should be silent, the Bible says. Be silent before him. We need to learn to come into his presence and be still and be silent. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'll give you another scripture. In Psalm 63, verse 6. Let's read the scripture. In Psalm 63, verse 6. There's another scripture from David. He's one person that talked a lot about being silent and being still in God's presence. See what he says. Psalm 63, verse 6 says, When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. When I remember you upon the bed. Let me read it from the King James. Psalm 63, verse 6. Verse 6 says, says, When I remember you upon my bed and meditate upon you in the night watches. So uh, David is saying here, when he lies still on his bed and meditates upon the Lord, he lies, he says, I lie awake thinking of you. That's another, another, another scripture says, another verse says, I lie awake thinking of you. I meditate upon you or meditate on the Lord in the night watches. For me, this is one I love to do a lot. This is one I just love to do this a lot. Most of the time that when I'm just about to go to bed or when I'm just about to stand up from, from sleep, I just stay still for a few minutes or a few, you know, just relax and just rest in his presence. I'm not praying. I'm not, I'm not praying out loud at that point. I'm just being quiet and still in his presence. And I know that he's with me, so I'm just receiving and just receiving his glory, receiving his presence. And let that presence, that glory. A few days ago, something happened to me that was quite shocking. I was just on my bed. I actually hadn't even started praying. All of a sudden, I started to vibrate. My, my legs started to shake. I'm like, what is going on? You know, I just like, it was so weird, but it was just the presence of God was just all over me. This was, I hadn't even started to get into the place of prayer or kind of worship, but his presence just came on, on me. And I started to like literally vibrate on my bed as, you know, his presence was so, was so strong upon me. So that's what I'm trying to say. When you practice this a lot, sometimes the Lord will just show up without even you even initiating the prayer. He just comes. Because what you're doing in this place, you're actually giving him opportunity to manifest himself, to, to show up in your life. And just giving him room to just wait upon the Lord. Let me read another scripture to you. In uh, Isaiah 26 verse 3. Isaiah 26 verse 3, I read the scripture. 
I'm reading many scriptures to you just to show you that this thing I'm talking about being still and being quiet is actually all over the place in the Bible. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Hallelujah. Your mind, this is, this is one of the keys to building intimacy with the Lord, is your mind needs to be stayed on the Lord. Your mind needs to be on the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you put your mind on the Lord? How do you set your affections or set your heart or set your mind on the Lord? The Bible also says to us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Colossians 3, 1 to 4. How do you do this? I'm going to say why we should do it or what we should be doing and how do you actually achieve this and how do you do it? Colossians, uh, Colossians, Colossians 3, 1 to 4. Verse 3, 1 to 4 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of the Father. Set your mind on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So the scripture is saying, set your heart or set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. So think on these things. Now the Bible also says something to us. If there's, let me read um, Philippians chapter, how do you, so this is, Bible says you should do this, but how do you do this? So this is the how. Let's talk about the how. How do I do this? How do I achieve this? How do I set my mind or set my heart or set my affections on the things of the Lord? How do I achieve this? I want to read the scripture from the book of Philippians. Philippians, uh, I think it's Philippians 4. If I can find Philippians. Philippians 4, verse... Eight. So yeah, verse eight says, "Finally, brothers, whatever is true. So this is how you do. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's anything excellence, is anything praiseworthy, think on these things or think about these things. So think about things that are pure, that are lovely, that are good, that are praiseworthy, that are commendable, that are excellent. Those are the things we set our mind upon." What that means is don't entertain any thoughts of negativity, of fear, of doubt, of unbelief, of uh, uh, anything that will make you anxious. The Bible says, you know, cast away any anxious thoughts, you know, set them away. Don't think these things, you know, re reject those kind of thoughts. Meditate upon the things that are lovely, good, pure, holy, uh, uh, commendable, lovely, excellent. Set your mind on these things and also set your mind on the Lord. Think on him because he's always with you. He never leaves you or forsake, forsakes you. Like we said, this is how you set your mind on the Lord. By praying without ceasing. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Does it mean you should you know, just keep praying all the time, 24 hours of the day, 7 days a week? No. All he's saying is pray without ceasing is not necessarily saying words but it's th your thoughts. You know, your thoughts are the most powerful thing you have as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a person. Your thoughts are the most powerful weapon you have. So don't allow negative thoughts to dwell there. Set your mind to think only on heavenly things. Think only on the beautiful things. Think only on the lovely things. Think only on the things of the Lord. Think only on pure, holy, righteous things. Hallelujah. Think on these things. You know, set your affection, scripture says. Set your mind on things above and not the things of the earth. Meditate upon these things. Hallelujah. Set your affections on them. So that's how you spend time building that consciousness of building intimacy is think about the Holy Spirit. Think about the Lord. You know, just how do you do that? Let's have, on a practical level. How do you think about your wife or your spouse or your husband, right? When you remember them, you want to commend them. You want to tell them how much you love them. You want to tell them, oh, honey, I'm missing you so much. Honey, you're so great. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're beautiful. You know, just want to say and speak all the lovely things you can to them, right? So the same thing with the Lord. You speak to him and just love on him and just appreciate him and adore him and thank him and praise him and worship him and just tell him how awesome he is, how wonderful he is, you know? Oh, God, you're so good. You're so wonderful. You're so mighty. You're so excellent. Lord, you're so faithful. You're so, you know, like... Whenever the thought comes to your mind, you know, spend time. You might, sometimes you might actually want to start by putting a time on your phone. Maybe time yourself and say, every 30 minutes, I'm going to stop. Smith Wigglesworth used to do this. He said, I never go without prayer. 
and I never stopped praying. How did he do this? He said, every 15 minutes, every 15 minutes, Wigglesworth will stop whatever he's doing, bring out his Bible, read a few verses, and pray. It's like five minutes or whatever it is, but very short, period, short prayers, a short prayer. But every, he did that every 15 minutes. He would stop, he would pray. He would stop, he would read his Bible and pray. He said, I never go without praying. I never, I never stop praying. That's how he did it. So you can do similar things. Set a, set a reminder on your phone every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every one hour, whatever works for you. And just remind yourself, put a alert that says, praise the Lord or remind, remember to pray or remember to praise. And at that time, just stop whatever you're doing and just set a few minutes, one minute, two minutes, and just praise God and just worship Him and adore Him for those one, two, three minutes and then go back to what you're doing. When you practice this over and over again, you will get to the habit of praising the Lord always and praising Him continually. Hallelujah. So I believe that this is blessed. I hope it blesses you and I hope you are encouraged. Um, but we need to build intimacy with the Lord. It's so important. And the way you do that, so if you didn't catch what I said in the beginning, please go back and watch the video from the start. I said you do that by building a relationship and a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Also, when the Lord begins to teach you and guide you and, you know, show you stuff, when you begin to spend time in, you know, what I do a lot, I'll tell you what I do, you know, find what works for you. I, I do it a lot when I, before I go to bed, I just spend a few minutes, maybe five, ten minutes, but I get, in those five, ten minutes, I'm just silent. I don't pray. I don't say a word. I do that all the time. Most of my prayers are actually silent prayer. I pray a lot of silent prayers. I play soaky music, just like what you're hearing just now. This is kind of soaky music that goes on in the background, you know, and I'm just silent. I'm just quiet. And in that moment, I'm just on my mind, my attention, my, I, I forget about the whole day. I forget about every project I'm doing. I forget about everything I forget about work or whatever and my time and my mind in those five ten minutes or whatever it is however long it happens to be is focused on him all i'm doing i'm thinking on him i'm thinking about him i'm thinking about how awesome he, he is and i begin to speak to him in my mind i begin to talk to the lord in my mind i'm going to tell him how wonderful and how awesome and how precious he precious he is and i recognize and i realize that he's with me even as i'm saying those prayers I'm visualizing in my mind that the Lord is standing or sitting right there on my bed. I'm imagining this. I'm imagining that he's right there with me because I know he is. Hallelujah. According to scripture. And I recognize his presence and I say, Lord, I thank you because I know you are here. I honor you and I adore you and I love you because you're so awesome and great. Thank you, Father, for being so good and precious to me. And I'm just saying all those things in my mind. And my mind is just focused on him and I'm just worshiping him in my spirit. As I'm doing that, my intimacy with the Lord is growing and growing and growing. And I, I just keep quiet. After I'm quiet, I just stop talking. Even in my mind, I stop thinking about anything else. I'm just silent. And I just receive. And I say, Lord, I just, I, guess I, say, I just say things like, Holy Spirit, I welcome you and I ask you to come. Come in your mighty power. Come in your presence. Just fill me with your love. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your joy. Fill me with your peace. In Jesus' name, I receive it right now, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And I just keep quiet. And even as I'm doing that right now, I'm beginning to sense and feel the presence of the Lord. You know, that's so simple and that's what you do. Just pray those kind of prayers and just be quiet in His presence. And let Him fill you with His love, fill you with His power, fill you with His presence. If you do this, I promise you, I promise you, your life will never remain the same. You, you will carry such a presence of the Lord that people around you begin to catch it. Just because you are, they are around you, they begin to catch that fire. I, pre, I ministered at the at at church two weeks ago and I, did, I didn't even necessarily pray a prayer of impartation. I was going to, but I because I was ministering or pray, pray for healing, I never got around to it. But one guy, one of the guys actually caught it because the power of God came so mightily on him and he caught the fire. <laughs> and he's been so on fire. He says he's never experienced anything like this. And I was like, some, something that was on my life, I could transfer to him. And that's the beauty of it because it's it's transferable. The Holy Spirit is not is not a monotone. It's not it's not it's not a monopoly. It's not just one person. Another person can catch it. He actually caught it without me even laying hands on him. He caught the fire. He started praying for the sick. He started seeing people getting healed while he prayed for the sick in that same meeting. It was so amazing and we just caught up the, uh, just just recently and he was so excited telling me about it and man he's for the past two weeks it feels like he's been born again again it feels like the fire of god the power and the passion of god is just 
should just come all over him again. He says he's feeling the Holy Spirit like never before. He said on the, in that meeting that day, he began to feel tingling in his hands. He received the tangible presence of the Lord came upon him and he began to function and just, you know, awesome, awesome. So anyway, I was so excited when I heard the testament like, wow, that's so good. I'm so, I'm so encouraged and blessed by that. So anyway, so um, I just want to encourage you. That's I'm just I'm not probably run over time. I didn't want to share too much, spend too much time on this. But I just want to encourage you. Please watch this video again. I've shared a few things, but the key nugget I shared was basically we need to practice the presence of God. If you've never listened or never watched or never read the book by Brother Lawrence, practicing the presence of God, please go and read it. Go and watch that. Uh, it's actually you can get it on YouTube actually. Um, we can read, read read the book from YouTube if it's free. Or you can go and buy the book if you want to on, on Amazon or Kindle. And uh, yeah, just just enc be encouraged. Practice God's presence. Uh, build intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And your, your, your spiritual walk would skyrocket. Spend time in silent prayer. Spend time in contemplative prayer. Just listening to the Lord in the quietness and the stillness of your heart. And allow Him to fill you with His love with his presence and his glory and you will see your life change like never before you receive wisdom you receive visions you receive ideas you receive things begin to happen in and around your life like that you've never experienced before anyway just want to bless you with this message i hope it blesses you and encourages you i want to thank those who've sown into our ministry so far i have been totally overwhelmed by the by people's generosity and blessing it's been so gracious i'm so blessed by that i'm going to encourage you as well if you want to support our ministry we're planning things for this year when we're just trusting god for the finances to do them our crusades our outreach events you know things like that we're planning to do this year please so please give god will richly bless and reward you as well as you do so there's a link right at the top of this message or this um, post please um post there or kind of go to our website and give as well or you want to set up a standing order to give monthly please do so god bless you richly as you do so so have a good night guys um good day wherever you are god bless you and have a wonderful week ahead in jesus name take care guys god bless you bye